Hello and welcome to another episode of Ezoke Explains. My name is Whitney Wright and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an AMP story. Um, now AMP already has a great story builder um, where you basically just click and drag some items and you can customize it, but I'm going to show you how to make your own custom AMP story using uh, HTML, CSS. So to get started, um, what is an AMP story? It's basically a story for uh, the mobile, and so um, different websites create these stories that you can click through. It gives you short snippets. Um, they're fun. They're interactive. So here's some examples of some major uh, publishers doing this. We have CNN. We have SB Nation. And AMP has tons of resources for AMP stories. Um, but what I did was um, I got onto GitHub, and they have basically a test story that you can download and um, edit the HTML for. And so that's this right here. Um, you're going to download this, and then this is the guide right here. And these are parts of an AMP story. So when you're creating these, you're going to have the story, and then there's multiple pages to that story, much like when you're clicking through an Instagram story or Snapchat, um, and you know, it goes to the next page, but it's still part of the same story. But within that story, there's going to be layers, just like there's layers on a website. Each page has different layers on it. Um, and then there's elements that go even on top of those layers. And so I'm going to show you how to do all of that today. And I will show you how I made this, which is our very first AMP story. It was about um, our event in New York, Pubtelligence. And I did use Photoshop for it because uh, I wanted things in a specific place. And there are some limitations as to the layout that uh, AMP Stories currently provides. So many different things you can do. Um, you can put videos as backgrounds. You can have text come into the side. There's tons of resources out there if you are unsure about coding. And we have Tyler popping in there on the right hand side. And that was uh, the AMP story that I created. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So you can see right here, um, there's the story. And then you have a page. Um, so it's going to be page one, page two, page three. And within that page, there's the layers. And so there's different templates that you can do for these layers. Um, there's vertical, there's thirds, and there's fill. Um, so this one is a vertical layer. And um, you can see right here, these are the elements that go on top of it. And so H1 is just an H1 header, just like WordPress. Um, and then your image source is this image called cat.jpg. Um, this is a paragraph, P for paragraph. Um, and you'd put some text about your cat. So that's the basic layout of an AMP story. And so I downloaded a software called Komodo Edit. It's just something I'm familiar with. And so when you download the package from GitHub, it is going to look like this. Um, it is going to look like this, a zip file. Um, and so then when you open the zip, it has all of these. So you have your HTML, the completed one. This is the readme. This is the one that they start with, with. And then you can actually follow through the steps on GitHub if you want to just learn how exactly they made from this to this. Um, and this is the bookend which um, goes to the end of the story. And these are all their pictures. You have pictures, you have videos, you have um, an MP3. Um, and so you want all of this in the same folder. So they, they have an Ant Pet story. You go in here, you have assets, and you have all of your code right there. Um, so what I did then was I have all of my code in a publishing AMP folder. You can see my assets. Um, have some code. Um, these are just some extra files. These are my original Photoshop files just so I didn't lose them. And here are all of my elements. Um, so for this video I'm gonna use, um, I made a copy of it so I didn't actually mess up anything on my um, actual AMP story. Um, so I've opened up the AMP story that I'm going to show you how to create. So this is all the code that um, I used for this story. You have all this CSS here, and this is just going to set rules anytime that you use um, these 
AMP story page, anytime you use an H1, anytime you use an H2. Um, so you can change the AMP story, the font family is Oswald, the color, um, you're gonna use hex code, um, AMP story page, the background color is always gonna be white as well. Um, and then you can go through different font sizes. Um, these, this is how you measure font sizes. And um, line height, that's in between lines of text. Um, the color, and you can set that for each and every font. So I have an H1, an H2, an H3, and an H4, um, just so I have different types of headings. And then you have a paragraph, and this Q is for quote. And so these are, this is all the video uh, code, and it's going to set up every video that has that video code, and it's going to set it up that way. Um, and so then you have the actual start to your story, which is this body right here. So the beginning of the story, this is all the code that um, you're going to need from the AMP, uh, the pets example. Um, so it always starts with HTML, then you have a head. And the thing about coding this is you want to make sure that anything you do, you always close it at the end. Um, it's pretty basic coding, but you just always want to double check and keep everything organized. That's why everything's kind of in like a perfect line here. If you keep everything organized, it's way easier to keep track of if you've closed something. So that's the end of the head. Um, and then down here, we begin the body. And so you have your cover page um, and I have, you know, multiple other pages. So I'm going to show you how I got started here. So this is the original pets code. It's very simple, very basic. They really make you start from the very beginning. So basically, they've given me all of these things. I just need to change them up to what I want. So you have your title that you'd want to change. Um, obviously, I'm not making one on the joy of pets. Um, anything right here you want to double check for if there's anything that you would need to change for yourself. Um, like I said, you can change all of these to fit whatever color and uh, text family and um, really just anything, any size, anything that you want to change it to. Um, and so to do images, you're always going to have um, the source of some kind. So it's always going to be in quotes, assets slash whatever the name of the file is, and then you close it with another quote. So it knows where those pictures are. There's different elements of the pet story that I liked. Um, let me show you what it looks like when it's finished. So this is what they are teaching you to do basically. You have some pictures, you have some headers, you have some font, some quotes. Um, this one has um, some chirping on it, um, which I don't think you can hear right now. Um, there's a video, has the background. And this one has like different elements, um, like transitions, it's cut up into four squares. So um, I basically just went through and kept code that I liked and then just moved them to different places, customized them for myself. Um, and so every page is going to start this way. AMP, story page, ID, page one, page two, page three. And then just like I showed you earlier, you're going to do the AMP story grid layer, the template. I'm doing fill. So these are the different templates right here. So this is fill. Um, and just like it, it's going to fill the whole page. So if you had a picture of a dog, it's going to show, um, it's going to be on the entire page. Um, and these are just the basic settings. And I, I keep them for fill just so that it completely fills the page. Vertical, um, you have some different options here. So vertical, you have different elements in there. So you have to indicate which one you want it in. So and here's the horizontal, same, same thing. Uh, this is thirds. And thirds is helpful. Um, so you have your grid layer, you have your template thirds, and then um, if you wanted a header up in this upper third, it's just H1 grid area, upper third, and then you new lower third. Um, so those are the different templates. And so for a lot of mine, I used fill because um, I used a lot of Photoshop elements and I'll show you how to do that pretty soon here. So there's fill and then my AMP image source assets. This has to be the exact title of the picture. So make it easy so that you can copy and paste it or you can type it um, pretty easily. Um, so these are all the animating elements. Um, you know, you have drop, you have fade in, you can fly in right, fly in left, fly in top, twirl in, wash left. There's a lot of options and it's really just kind of whatever style you want. And then on top of that, you can drag out the animation to a certain amount of time. So animate in duration is going to be 2.7 seconds. Um, and then another thing you can do with the animate is right here, you can see animate in delay. So say you want something to fly in from the right, but then you want something to fly in from the left, but you want it to wait um, a second or two till it does. So it's um, kind of overlaid. You can animate in delay um, one of those elements and you can say, you know, I want it delayed by a second. 
And so you can really play around with this. And um, it was a lot of fun to figure out using Photoshop for these AMP stories. Pretty much um, I always, when I do a fill, I always do the width 720 and the height 1280 because that's what the width and the height are within the code. Um, and you can do 72 pixels an inch because this is going on the web. So what I've done here, I have a couple different things. Um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you can see that there's all these different layers right here. And when I was laying it out, because I wanted to see how it looked when it would come in on the page, I laid it out here, but then I just saved them as different files. Um, so I created this on Photoshop because um, I just wanted this as my background. And But another thing you can do, and if you watch our video on making thumbnails for YouTube, I go through a lot of the Photoshop tools if you aren't uh, familiar with them. And uh, so what I did here was I took a picture of Tyler and I cropped him out, cleaned it up on the sides, and then I pasted him on a new document. And then what I did was I uh, made a new layer, which is right here. I selected the layer and then I used the erase tool and I just erased all the background. So this makes it so anytime this image is pulled up, it's going to be Tyler and you can lay it on anything and it's going to be transparent background, um, which is important if you wanna layer stuff on top so you know exactly where he's going to come in because you created it on Photoshop. The only thing about uh, these transparent files is that you want to save them as uh, PNGs. And that's because JPEGs do not save transparent backgrounds, but PNGs do save the transparent background along with everything else in it. Um, and so if you're gonna use this as a complete fill for your AMP story, uh, you wanna save it as a PNG. And then just make sure you're saving all your images and your assets in the assets folder. Um, so that's what I did here, and I'll show you um, on our story once more what I just went through. So here's that first page, See, I had my full background. I had a transparent slide that I also made on Photoshop come in from the left. I had the font that I used, an H1 tag on this in the code to come in from the right. And um, I had a logo that I also made on Photoshop so it would be in the exact location I wanted it um, on a transparent background, so for a fill layer. And I had it fade in there at the very end. And then what I was showing you with um, Tyler is I had this image and this text come in and then I wanted Tyler to pop in at the very end um, since he was the host and I gave some time for the readers to read through this text before I brought Tyler in. And this is the fill setting for Tyler's layer and because I saved it as a transparent background, he's just right on top of everything. Um, and so how I did this, um, for Ben's page. So you have the video there at the top, but then I have Ben moving back and forth um, at the bottom. And the way I did that was I created a Ben Photoshop file that I saved as a PNG with a transparent background. And so then I really just did um, pan right and pan left. I alternated. So there's the pan right, there's the pan left, there's the pan right. Um, I have the durations set at different times. Um, I have the durations Durations lasting all the same, but I have them delayed at different times because, you know, he goes one way and then he comes another way and I need them to come at different times. Um, so I've laid it out that way. Um, the only thing I really did have to play around with with this was um, these Translate X 725. Um, that allowed me to push him completely off the screen so then he could come back in. And so it's really just going to take some playing around to figure out what that is for your page. And I basically just continued to um, test out different uh, PX numbers and um, eventually he was pushed off the page and then I could use that um, again and again and I just copied and pasted it. So it was a little bit tedious, but once you kind of figure out how to do it, it's really not that hard. Um, and it ends up being kind of fun. So a lot of this um, is just copy pasting, testing. What you do want to do is if like pretty much any time you make a change, I save the file and then I always do view in browser and it'll open your HTML into basically how it's going to look like once it's published, which allows you to um, see how your animation is filling in um, and you don't want to make a bunch of changes and then something not work because you have to go through all your code that you did and look for what went wrong. So it's way easier if you just 
check it um, anytime you start making changes and continually check and see what it did. The only thing that I didn't use from the pets HTML was the layer with the layer with the birds. It has a background audio, page three background audio, and they just have an MP3 of a bird singing. You can add that kind of stuff to your own story as well. Um, and this is what the bookend at the very end is going to look like. Um, just basically things that people could click on, more articles to read so you can link back to other things on your website, other content. Um, has these buttons right here. And so this is all the coding and that will be the very end of your story. Um, and there's so many guides online. Um, W3 Schools is a great online resource for this um, because you can pretty much look up anything. Like if you wanted to make your font white bold, um, if you wanted to make it thicker and then, you know, you could do different numbers here. There's so many different types of properties in CSS code and HTML code that you can look up on here. It is a great resource. If you want to customize something and you aren't quite sure, you can pretty much look it up on W3Schools and there's always going to be an answer there. Um, GitHub is also a great resource. So that's how I custom made our AMP story using HTML and CSS and Photoshop. Um, AMP stories are a great way to get out little pieces of your articles, um, just give people snippets of information, um, and then you can always link back to the greater content later. Um, AMP stories is pretty easy to use. There's tons of resources online. They have tons of resources, um, and you just have to look it up. Um, again, I'll put those links at the bottom of this so that you can look them up later. Um, thanks for joining me. Again, I'm Whitney, and this has been another episode of Ezoic Explains.